All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of Xerox Dev Talk. So I'm very excited that we're putting out this series. Um, it's a bite-sized series where we'll be diving into building various DeFi products with the suite of Xerox APIs. And through our episodes, we'll cover integration best practices, walk through some code, and talk about uh, various features and explain exactly how to use those. For our very first episode, I'm very excited to have our very own um, Eric on board to talk about a very interesting topic that I feel like isn't talked about enough, uh, RFQ liquidity. So how about I'll bring him on stage and we can get the episode started. Sweet, awesome. Hey everyone, nice to be here. I'm Eric, one of the PMs here at Xerox and I focus specifically on our request for quote system or RFQ. So for today, uh, we want to dive in, what is RFQ, who should use it, um, all the benefits of it, and then talk about the implementation. So get started and talk about what is RFQ liquidity? Yeah, good question. Um, you can really think of it as just an exclusive source of liquidity that we at Xerox have been working on since late 2020. Uh, and back then, we were probably one of the first to, to try to build anything like it. Um, but yeah, RFQ, what it stands for is request for quote. Um, it's a system where we are requesting quotes from market makers for every specific trade. It's a great source of liquidity. Uh, and there's some benefits that we can talk a little bit more about later uh, compared to on-chain sources like AMM. Um, but at a high level, you know what, what Xerox is doing every time is it's tapping into hundreds of liquidity sources, uh, and an RFQ is one of those. Uh, and for pairs where it's available, it consistently outperforms AMM in pricing. Uh, and for us at Xerox, we're really talking about delivering the best executed prices. Uh, we decide to include RFQ more than 30% of the time across all of volume and sometimes up to 90% uh, of trades where RFQ is the best for uh, to give you and your users that best executed price. So in summary, RFQ should kind of be a, a no-brainer liquidity source for you and your, your users uh, to consider when trying to get that best executed price. Nice. Well, good high-level summary. Um, so you mentioned a bit about you know, how it fits into this larger ecosystem of liquidity. So let's dive in. How does RFQ work? And where does it fit into this ecosystem of various liquidity sources that Rex is, is pulling from? Yeah, for sure. Um, so like I was saying, Xerox aggregates from over 100 sources, both on and off chain. Uh, and so that off chain component includes our professional market makers, and that's where RFQ is. Maybe it's easier to kind of show this diagram and kind of we'll walk through each of those steps. Cool. So in this diagram, we're kind of labeling what that process looks like. So your end user is that retail trader. Uh, and that first step is they're requesting a quote. Uh, this is them trying to trade, for example, WETH for USDC, and they are trying to you know, sell 0.5 WETH. What we're doing when we get that request at 0x is we're pinging AMMs to get quotes from there. And at the same time, we're also requesting quotes from market makers. Uh, what we're doing there is basically getting all the potential sources and routes that, uh, a, route, uh, that a trade can go through aggregating all of it. Uh, and then from there, our router is trying to figure out what is that best uh, way to make that trade. Once we get all of that information, we'll send that best route back to you or your end user, which they will submit on chain. Uh, and hopefully what comes out of that is, you know, you requested a trade and you get back the call data to execute that trade. All right, so you just explained RFQ is one of the liquidity sources that we pull from. Can you dive into when we decide to include RFQ as a part of a quote? Mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think it kind of comes back uh, to that idea that we have here at Xerox about the best executed price. Uh, and so that's kind of why we tap into all these liquidity sources is that we don't really care what that source is. We just want to make sure that your user at the end of the trade got the best deal. Uh, so to me, when I think about best executed price, I think there's two main parts. One is the price itself, right? The amount of tokens that you get that you wanted. And also the two, the gas cost that is associated with executing that trade. So our router will include only include RFQs if, if it determines that when factoring both of those components, that RFQ is best. Um, I want to take this moment here to kind of highlight that first part around pricing and specifically about slippage. This is going to go into a little bit of details here, but Xerox RFQ is based on the OTC order feature that is a part of the Xerox protocol at the smart contract level. 
Um, so the OTC order structure itself defines that maker token, that taker token, as well as the amounts of each. And then the function itself on the smart contract called settle OTC order uses those values to determine how much tokens you will get given how much tokens you're providing. And so that ratio that is already defined by the maker amount and taker amount is exactly the price that will be used. It cannot deviate this, and this is enforced on the smart contract itself. Uh, so this means that there's zero slippage possible for RFQ orders. Uh, and so kind of zooming back into that initial question of, you know, when is RFQ uh, included in trade? This is kind of, this detail is really addressing that part about pricing, about slippage, uh, and when we would feel like RFQ will give your end user the, the best uh, trade possible. So yeah, Xerox our API is gonna do all that hard work for you, thinking about gas costs, slippage, and whatnot, so that you don't have to. What all you're gonna see when you get a return result, result uh, is the best trade. And if Xerox RQ is the liquidity source that will give you that, that's when it'll be included. Nice, and yeah, to your point, you know, all this information that Eric just covered is done under the hood. And as the integrator, all you're doing is tapping into the swap API and we're doing all that um, routing, um, finding the best price across these sources for you. So just to really know the details, but it's good to it's good to be aware of what's, what's happening under that hood. Absolutely. Well, I guess that segues us into the next set of uh, next set of discussions. So, talking about you know, why does it matter and how does it benefit benefit the users? So, for teams who who are interested in integrating it, um, as you mentioned, slippage, zero slippage. So, making sure that the the price that the user is quoted is what they actually get uh, at the end of the day. Uh, so, are there other benefits to integrating RFQ? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's definitely the, the the one that's top of mind for me. And, and just to reiterate, yeah, RFQ liquidity has zero slippage. So your users, what they see is what they're going to get on chain when it is when it is executed. Um, simply not possible to deviate from it. Uh, tied to that is kind of this idea around RFQ uh, transactions having protection from MEV attacks and front running. Because these RFQ orders are personally tailored for each trade, so it's literally every time you or user requests a trade, a quote is made for you. Yeah, so what this means is there's basically no way to front run in uh, an RFQ order because there is no public information that uh, it's, it's basing off of. Uh, and so MEV attacks more broadly over the last year has you know, extracted over $473 million from traders. Uh, and slippage is definitely a big part of that. Every time a trade goes through an AMM pool, there's a slippage tolerance that people set and MEV bots are always trying to extract as much of that as possible that they can. Uh, and so this is something that you can protect your users from uh, through RFQ order. So that's the second main benefit. Uh, a third benefit here that I think about a lot is just uh, the seamless execution and under the hood efficiency. OTC orders, like I was talking about early, what, earlier, was specifically designed to be as gas efficient as possible, uh, to be really a stripped down version of a trade, uh, so that on chain, it requires as little computation as possible, thus making it cheaper to execute. So on average, it is definitely more gas efficient compared to an AMM. Uh, and then the last main benefit that I think about is that RFQ liquidity is really liquidity that's uh, surfaced through sophisticated market makers. Market makers, their whole job is to price assets as best as they can. Uh, and that is what's fueling all those prices that you see in RFQ. Um, and it is working really hard to make sure that you and your users are getting the best price because they're competing not against, not in, not only against AMMs, but also the other market makers that we have within uh, Xerox's ecosystem. And so you're getting the best of their liquidity uh, and the best pricing that uh, they can they can provide so that they can win as much as possible. So those I would say are kind of the, the main benefits. I think we talked a little bit more about these in the article that we recently uh, released. Uh, so definitely check that out um, if you wanna hear more there. Yeah, uh, last note that I also want to share here is just like where I feel like Xerox RFQ is, is pretty unique compared to what else is out there. Within ZeroX, we really treat RFQ as a per user trade liquidity source and considered alongside any other on-chain source fairly. No batching, no first looks, no auctions. So RFQ really only gets included if 
the our router determines that it will give your user the best executed price. There's no preferential treatment uh, at all. I wanted to touch on the benefits explicitly for the integrators. So can we like, why should I be interested in integrating RFQ? Yeah, that's a good question. And I think it's it's also worth calling out that we think that there's you know, two broad types of, of integrators. One type of integrator where you're really exposing Swap to your end users of your product, uh, and two, an integrator that is using Swap for yourself. Uh, so for that first type of integrator that's exposing Swaps for their end users, uh, just relying on 0x to provide that experience for you and, and using RFQ can ensure that you get the best prices for your end user. And, and we think that really helps with the user experience, uh, increases the retention of people on your product. Uh, and hopefully you can just rely on us to, to take away this, this complex part for you so that you can focus on everything else that makes your product unique. For that second type of user who's using it for themselves, uh, it's it's honestly pretty similar, um, but it's really just like the idea of reducing your operational cost uh, and making sure that you can get the best trade possible for yourself. All right, so moving on to the next session about uh, who who should be using it. So can you talk to me about you know what sort of use cases are are best for RFQ? Yeah, it's gonna be a little cheeky, but in short, all teams should just provide like, should should be looking for RFQ liquidity it can only improve that best executed price that you and your users receive. So to me, I really see no downside at all to RFQ liquidity. It can only be better for you. The longer answer here is that RFQ is definitely the most beneficial for a certain category of tokens. The, the top traded non-pegged pairs. So these would be your USDC to WETH uh, or other stable coins to WETH as well as RAP BTC. Those five pairs account for about a quarter of all DEX trading volume. So if you or your users usually trade those pairs, you should absolutely use RFQ. In addition to the categories of tokens, uh, RFQ is also very, very good for smaller trades. This kind of ties back to one of those benefits that I mentioned earlier about RFQ's efficiency. Uh, and so when we kind of look at the cross section of both of those, so this is trades of those top non peg pairs, uh, and then kind of break it down into trade sizes. We see that for trades that are less than $100 on those top traded pairs, RFQ accounts for almost 90% of all of that volume. And then for medium sized trades, so that's between $100 to $100,000, RFQ makes up half, half of those trades. Um, so, you know, kind of summarizing all of that, the teams that will most benefit from RFQ are the ones who trade smaller trade sizes for the most traded pairs. Um, but there's, again, no harm in including RFQ as a liquidity source that you consider for all teams. Now onto where is RFQ available and how you can implement it. So RFQ liquidity for Xerox is available on Mainnet, Polygon, and Arbitrum via the Swap API endpoint. You can find the links to access these endpoints at this cheat sheet here. And the way to implement it is done in three simple steps. First, we'll need to query for an indicative price via the price endpoint. And what an indicative price is, is just the pricing information for when a user is not ready to submit an order yet and is just browsing for a price. So the reason that we use this endpoint is that we don't want to clog up the market maker systems by having them commit to a quote just yet. So it's best to use this price endpoint when we're just asking for prices. So what's returned by this price endpoint is just pricing information. It doesn't respond with a full Xerox order, which means that we cannot submit this onto the Ethereum network just yet. Think of it as a read-only option. We can't write it to the Ethereum network yet. So to make this call, it's super straightforward. Um, looks like a standard swap API call. And the only additional required parameter here is the taker address. Just want to call out that the taker address parameter here is required for RFQ liquidity. And this is the address that will be filling the order. And here's an example of the response that's returned back. It includes a price and a buy sell amount in the base unit amount. And notice that there is no order information at the bottom of this response. Now, step number two is we're going to fetch a firm quote from the quote endpoint. 
So what is a firm quote? Well, at this point, the taker is ready to fill the quote from the swap API. So this API responds back with a full Xerox order, which can be submitted to the Ethereum node. So you can think of this as both read and write, meaning we're both reading information about the quote, and then you can write it to the blockchain by submitting it. Therefore, it's expected that the market maker has reserved this particular set of assets that's required to settle the trade, leaving the order unlikely to reverse. And the requirements here again should look like our standard swap API call. So we're only requiring the sell amount or the buy amount and making sure that we have a non-null taker address. So let's take a look here at an example API request. And when this runs here, we can see that the Xerox source, which refers to the RFQ liquidity, has a full proportion of one or 100%. So 100% of this is getting filled by an RFQ order in this case. Now the last step is to submit our transaction to the blockchain. And you just need to sign the transaction with your preferred Web3 library. Maybe that's Wagme, Web3.js, or Ethers.js. And we have some examples of that here in the documentation. And lastly, if we want to test our RFQ integration, it's super straightforward. The way we do that is to add the included sources parameter and set that equal to 0x. By doing so, we're ensuring that only RFQ liquidity is source. And by setting this, the swap API will raise an error if the taker address is not present, it will return pricing information for only RFQ liquidity, and it will raise an error if the API key is invalid. Well, thanks for joining us in our very first Xerox Dev Talk, focusing on integrating RFQ liquidity into your system. If you want to dive more into this topic, I highly recommend checking out our two blog posts, the Intro to RFQ and the RFQ Deep Dive. Both can be found in the Xerox Content Hub. Also, make sure to check out our simple quick start guide on integrating RFQ liquidity, and it covers these three simple steps, as well as points to a swap demo built in Next.js that shows best practices for implementing both indicative pricing and firm quotes, leveraging the RFQ liquidity system. And that's all it takes to set it up. All right, and that wraps it up for our very first episode of Xerox Dev Talk. I hope you enjoyed the episode and feel free to drop a comment for any future episodes that you're interested in seeing. And please hit the like button in order to stay updated for when we put out more videos. See you later.